This is Katherine Dubberly, the answer lady, here to talk to you about adjusting the tension on a knitting machine. It can make all sorts of difference to the smoothness of the knitting, and it controls how the yarn feeds through the mast. Looking at the tensioning device on a knitting machine, this is the adjustable dial on the mast. When it is in the one position, there's very little pressure on the yarn as it moves through the place I'm indicating with the dental tool. As you increase the numbers, you also increase the tension on the yarn. You might even be able to see that that's tighter than it was. Now, if crud, such as bits of yarn, or rust, or anything gets in here, it can make the tensioner not work properly. So you always want to make sure that it's clean and well lubricated. Here is a yarn correctly threaded going through the bottom yarn guide in front of the bar that's just below the tensioning device, around behind and between the two discs on the device, through the yarn guide on the front, and now you're looking at the actual tension spring and the yarn through the end of it. Here I have my tensioner set on 7, which is the highest setting for this particular mast. And it's knitting fine, but look what happened. The last stitch didn't really want to knit at all, right there. That's a sign that that's a bit too much tension. It would also be a sign if the last three stitches were very, very, very tight. I've reduced my tension, and I think it's knitting just right now. I'm going to have to hold the camera by hand, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see. Well, that's doing very well. And how I can tell is all the stitches are the same size. There's no excessive pulling up anywhere. And nothing's dropping off. Now let's loosen the tension too much and see what happens. Here's another thing to check. This spring should be pulling down significantly, as you see it now. It will look a little different on different machines. But if it is not pulling down like that, if it's not pulling down and it looks more like this, of course it is not removing the slack from the yarn. That's terrible. That's going to make trouble any second. And the whole function of the spring is to pull that slack out. So at the end of every row, you could get in the habit of testing with your hand just a little bit. Just put your hand over there and make sure that it feels a little bit taut. I'll tighten this back up from behind. Anybody who's ever knitted on a bond machine knows there isn't a tensioner with it. You can improvise one, but at the end of a bond row you have to do what I'm doing with my hand to stop those loops forming. And although you don't need to do that where a tensioner exists, it's kind of good to know and understand what's going on so that you can keep an eye on it. There should be not any slack right there. Okay, I haven't actually dropped any stitches yet, but you can see that with too loose of tension, I'm making bigger stitches along the edge, so my edge will be sloppier. If I keep this up, eventually, a loop of yarn will form here, and it'll get caught as I try to bring the carriage back across. It might do something like this which you can't see from underneath the carriage, but it makes a ghastly snarl, and it could break needles, and it could damage the carriage. So that's something to be avoided. I kept going with overly loose tension so I could show you where this really happened. I knitted back and forth fast, and eventually this loop was created. So this would certainly make a messy edge. Now I could still tie this off and weave it in, but here's what will happen. If you didn't notice it because it was sitting like that when I found it, my next pass across, it might catch on the wheels that are underneath the sinker plate. Here are the wheels and brushes that might catch the loop of yarn. And you can see where actually that's happened to this one in the past, and it's somewhat raggedy and will eventually need replacing because of it. Nobody's perfect. You are occasionally going to catch loops. But as much as possible, we don't want to do that to preserve the condition of our brushes, wheels, 
and everything else under the machine.